Management of Dental Trauma in the Emergency Department. Hi, my name is Hans Rosenberg, and for the purposes of this video series, I will be only discussing supraperiosteal infiltration and how to perform an infraorbital nerve block as the section that we will be covering dental anesthesia. The reason is the workshop is only 45 minutes and we unfortunately do not have time for any further techniques. Superperiosteal infiltration. This is the most common type of dental anesthesia provided in the emergency department. With this technique, you will provide pain relief to a single tooth. This can be done for someone presenting with a painful tooth, fracture, or luxation. And our target is that nerve that you can see that sits just above the tooth. First, you want to select the tooth that you're trying to anesthetize and dry with gauze. You can then apply a topical anesthetic to the area using benzocaine or lidocaine gel. You want to pull the lip away from the teeth and insert the needle with a bevel facing the teeth at the mucobuccal junction. Aspirate to ensure that you are not in a vessel and infiltrate 1 to 2 cc's of 2% lidocaine. Now, some of the ways that superperiosteal infiltration may fail is that you can sometimes be too far from the periosteum, either in a distal or buccal direction. Additionally, you may need to perform this on the palatal aspect as well, especially when we are talking about molars. Finally, it's really only useful if a single tooth is involved. Next, I want to discuss the infraorbital nerve block. The infraorbital nerve provides innervation to the maxillary teeth except for the molars. In addition, it also provides innervation to the skin of the upper lip, the skin of the nose, and the lower eyelid. As you can see in this picture here, if you're able to accomplish an infraorbital nerve block, you can actually work not only on the teeth of a patient, everything other than the molars, but also if there's a lip laceration that's accompanying it, it'll also be helpful in that scenario. The anatomical landmark that you're looking for is the infraorbital foramen at the infraorbital notch. This landmark can usually be palpated. In cases of significant swelling, you can line up with the patient's pupil when looking straight ahead. For example, you can see in this image that the pretty much medial aspect of the patient's pupil lines up pretty perfectly with the infraorbital notch. In order to perform the block, First, if you have time, apply a topical anesthetic on a cotton tip swab approximately one minute prior to the procedure. Then you'd want to dry the mucosa and retract the upper lip. Make the puncture in the mucosa opposite to the upper second bicuspid and insert the needle in a cephalad direction. With a finger continuing to palpate the infraorbital notch, aspirate first then inject 2-3 to three cc's of 2% lidocaine. At this point, some people like to massage the area in order to maintain most of the anesthetic in the region where you're trying to place it. Do not inject in the foramen, but just outside of the foramen. So those are the two techniques that we will be covering at the conference. There are some great videos that show the procedures actually being done that I will have in the linked in the video summary below. And that is all for management of dental trauma in the emergency department. Thank you.